International Ministries, Uji and Welcome. Let's have our seats and listen to what package the Lord has reserved for us today. We have been singing, we have been worshiping, we have been saying words. What do we call that? Pray. We have been praying. We have been talking to our Father. Even before we left our homes, before we came here, we have been made a visit. That spirit that led us to come here, he asked us to come with purpose. And before we were guided, we were praying before we were guided to come here. And as we are sitting here this morning, we are being praying. So the question is, what is Now, when we talk about the key, 
What do you remember? What do you think about? We hear the word the key. It means the mother is there is a uh, no. there is a no. there is a no. yes. When you hear the word key, it means that there is a lock somewhere, and you must use that key to open the lock. And that key is your call. That key is the mouth that you have to open. That is the key. That will open. That will open all closed doors. That will create a passage, a new way for you to access God. Are we there, people of God? Are we there, people of God? Why is it called the key? Remember in the word of Mark 1 35. Mark 1 35. And uh, in the morning, rising up a great while before the day, then no, rising up a great while before the day. He went out and uh, departed into a solitary place. And uh, there prayed. Who are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus. Every day. He leaves and goes to a quiet place where he sits there alone and he prays. So, why therefore do we call prayers a key? Since we are followers of Christ, we are imitators of Christ. And Christ has shown us an example of getting very early in the morning to go and pray. We too, as imitators of Christ, must use that key because it is that very key that he used to access all the doors of heaven. And when he spoke to his father, his father listened to him. His father responded to him. We have seen the signs and wonders he performed while on earth. It was because there was one thing that he never failed to do. He never failed to call on his father. So why is prayer called the key? Prayer is called the key, and we can rightly say it is an instrument of faith. An instrument of faith. You know that there is a father. You know that he's a dependent on God. And you call out on him each time. Because you know that he has an answer. As I told you in the mind of the great day. We equally say, prayer is an only tool to access heaven. Prayer is an only tool, people of God, to access heaven. If you want to see God, if you want to be in communion with God, you can only do that through prayers. Take note. Equally, prayer is a weapon to unlock all closed doors. Remember that the demon is to fight your prayers. The only way you can prove to the demon that you are consistent and strong is through prayers. Because what he tries to do to you is to be weakness. If you cannot communicate with your God, it means there is something blocking you, and what is that? It's the demon. So prayer is a weapon. You stand and you say, No, I can't stay talking to my God this morning. I can't feel talking to my God this afternoon. This is this is I must access my father. He has a package for me. 
He is the only source of my hope and my salvation. I can't fail to come here. Take note. We can equally say prayer is a password, a code of believers to open our heavenly accounts. Remember, you have a heavenly account. How do you access it? No, it has everything sort there. You are, you are the son, so it has everything for you there. How do you access your account? You have a code. And that the code is your prayers. Prayer, not to say the least, is an identity with Christ. You are a member of the household of Christ. Because you cannot see God without passing through Christ. And you cannot pass through Christ without prayers. Hello? The next question we'll begin to ask ourselves how then do we pray? And because prayer is here. How do we pray? For you to be effective in your prayers, you must give God back his words. That's the first thing you must remember. For you to be succeed in communicating, to succeed in communicating with God, you must give him back his words. Remember Jesus did to Satan when Jesus was tempted after 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. The demon knew that Jesus needed some food. He would ask him to change the stones into bread. Jesus did not just say, You, my friend, a small boy, have come to this earth. And I'm above you. No, 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 no. He said, it is. He didn't say, I am the Lord. Your God, you must respect me. No, 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 no. He said, it is. Man shall not live by bread. He quoted. Are we doing that in our prayers? Are we doing that in our prayers? Let us start doing that. You cannot quote the word without reading the word, without mastering the word, which causes us, therefore, to be consistent in reading the word of God. So that when we meet the temptations that Jesus made, we will be able to use the word to challenge the enemy. Without which, they were not praying. We are saying words. If you want to talk about how to pray, Jesus gave us a brief manner which to pray. That should be Matthew 6, 9 to 12 or 13. The Lord's Prayer. But let's break it down a bit. So it's very easy for you and I to understand. First thing, we must worship. Wash, 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 wash. Start your prayers with wash, wash, worship the Lord. Wash the Lord. Honor him. Glorify his name. Uplift his name. Bless his name. He is worthy. When you do that, the next thing you do is you plead for mercy because. This body, which we call the temple of the Holy Spirit, has been taken over by demonic activities. Things that have alienated the Holy Spirit from us. For us to be able to talk to God and listen to us, we must break that chain. And that chain is only through asking for forgiveness. Recognizing that we're sinner and pleading for mercy. 
Because our hearts are the seeds of sin. When you cleanse your heart, remember, these bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. When you cleanse that heart, you have cleansed the seed of the Holy Spirit. It cannot have access to your body. To regain that which your sins are cast away. His presence. So as far as forgiveness, what do you do? You invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. And remember that Jesus has already given us the power in Luke 10 and 10 to trample upon serpents and scoffers and for all parts of darkness and by no means harm us. How did he do it? It's because he had given us that power, that presence of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it by our own flesh. It is the Holy Spirit, that Spirit of God that is in us, that assists us in destroying the works of the deed. So when we receive the Holy Spirit, the next thing is we destroy the works of the demon. We clear every part that the demon has tried to plant seeds to destroy our relationship with God. When you have done that, the next thing is present your request to God. Are you petitioning him? Are you supplicating? Are you thanking? What are you doing? Are you pleading? What are you doing? Are you worshiping? That is what you do after you present your request to God. You present your request to God. Are all prayers answered by God? That's a tough one now. What? God sees by day? So if your prayer is not coming from the heart, then you are wasting your time. The next thing is that if you are praying selfish prayers, selfish, you know selfish prayers? Ah, look at my sister there, she's driving in my journey. Father, give me one so that I can get a car that is above my own so that you prove that I am serving you fully and better than huh. What kind of prayer is that? Selfish prayer. Selfish prayer. Mm-hmm. It's not bad for the spirit. You're wasting your time. God will never hear that prayer. Let's say that. Hebrews 5, 7 to 10. Let's take uh, Daniel 9, 17 to 19. Daniel pray the prayer of mercy for his people. Let's take uh, Matthew 6, 6 to 13. That's where we have the Lord's Prayer. Let's take the rule of uh, 1 King chapter 8. That's uh, a solemn prayer, supplicating God for the people of Israel. May God bless his word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.